Now today, before I even get started, I have longed to preach on this. When I got saved 17, 18 years ago, I, my daughter bought me a, a little pin with a box. And on it, it was John 15, and it says, The vine and the branches. Mm -hmm. That pin has sat on my desk, never been used, but I often, always, every time, it's always there, and I look at it, the vine and the branches. And saints of God, there's no question about that. He's the vine, we're the branches. And I want to, today, as I, as I bring forth the word to you, I don't want you to, anything that you've brought with you today, leave it out. Don't even focus on me. Just focus on the word that the Lord has given me to preach to you today. Because I assure you, it is it's from the Lord. And, and, and he's present today. He, he's in this house today. He's with us. And he woke me up very early this morning. Very early. And all I, all I did was sit and listen as he spoke to my heart. And, and I, I, I just, without further ado, I just, I just want to get into the word. I want to bring it forth, but I want you to just focus on what Jesus says in John 15, the vine and the branches. Jesus says, and it's in red. You know when black was the red, that's hot. All Bibles, 2 Timothy 3.16 says God is God breathed. But when black was the red, there's something special about that to me. He says, I am the vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Yeah. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As a Father has loved me, so have I loved you. I love it. As a Father has loved me, Jesus says, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Not a suggestion. He says, a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. 
If you would picture with me for just a moment, a beautiful apple tree in the springtime. How they're white and some are white and it's just, they're just absolutely beautiful. But if a storm comes up and a branch falls away from that, from that wonderful, beautiful tree, falls to the ground, it will stay pretty for a short while. But then because it's separated from that life-giving sap, which comes from the trunk, it withers and it dies. And Jesus makes a clear distinction here between two kinds of pruning. Separating and cutting back branches. The Father is the garden. Jesus is the vine. And the word's clear. He says, my Father cuts back branches so that you will be even more fruitful. In other words, Jesus is saying sometimes we have to undergo some form of discipline in our lives. Some things that are not very comfortable for us. Sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone. And that's called pruning. He's pruning us. He's preparing us. Because as a loving and good father, he knows what's down the road. We don't, but he does. And he's called each and every person in this class, in this, I'm sorry, in this Sunday school again, in this room today, to bear fruit. And I want to tell you, saints of God, fruit is not limited to soul winning. In this chapter, Jesus mentions answered prayer, joy, and love as being fruit. Soul winning is absolutely the most powerful thing anyone can do. But understand, it's not us who wins the souls, it's the Holy Spirit in us that's bearing fruit. Galatians 5.22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is just that, it's fruit. Produced by the Spirit. It is not fragile. It's not subject to change. Its root is deeply embedded in the person of Jesus Christ. When we abide in Him and allow Him to live His life through us, the result is character that endures the chaos of life. A lot of people say, well, I'm not a a Sunday school teacher, I'm, I'm not an evangelist, I'm not a pastor, and, and yet, but that's, that's not what Jesus talked about. There's many, many ways of bearing fruit. When we seek the fruit of the Spirit, and I mean all nine of them, and if you seek the fruit of the Spirit, you can be assured you're being led by the precious Holy Spirit. That's powerful news. If you're seeking the fruit of the Spirit, you can be assured that the Holy Spirit is guiding you and directing you. But we have to seek it. Jesus says, we must remain in the vine. And today, in this chaotic world, we are hearing from leaders that there is, that Jesus Christ isn't the only way. That there are many ways. And that's, that's not true. That's the first thing from the truth you possibly get. Jesus says, I am the way, not one of the ways, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one comes to the Father except for you. He's not one of the ways, he's the way. Right there was the way. A lot of people think that I have the fruit of the Spirit. That's wonderful. But you want to be sure, ask your best friend. How about your spouse? You know, the fruit of the Spirit is, is this. I'm going to go through them again, but this time in a different way. Love is the beginning. Love for those who do not love in return. Have love for those who don't love you back. Jesus said it's easy to love those who don't love you. Even the pagans do that. 
joy in the midst of, a, of painful circumstances. Joy in the pain of bad circumstances. Things don't quite go your way. You can still be filled with joy because you know that you know that you know that you know who's in control of your life. Yes. Who's in control of your life? You know, I love to watch this show on television uh, where this fellow says, happy, happy, happy. That's beautiful. And I understand how he means it. But I want joy, joy, joy. That no matter what comes my way, the chaotic things of this world, I can slip back like the Apostle Paul said. I don't look back. I just plunge forward. Amen. Because I know whose I am. And don't make a hoot on who you are. What matters is whose you are. Peace. Peace when something you were counting on doesn't come through. You can still be filled with the peace of God knowing that he knows what's best in your circumstances. He knows what's best in your situation. Maybe it didn't come through. Maybe a job fell through. Maybe, but you know what? God's probably got something better for you down the line. Patience. When things aren't going fast enough for you. Patience is something that I think we all need to work on. I know this preacher does. <coughs> But I'm still working on it. And we have to be filled with that kind of patience. Kindness toward those who treat you unkindly. This is all fruit. Goodness toward those who have been uh, intentionally insensitive to you. Ever happened to you? Somebody just doesn't treat you the way you should? Goodness and faithfulness when friends have proved unfaithful you still remain faithful. Gentleness toward those who have handled you roughly. They haven't treated you the way you deserve. But you still handle them with gentleness and self-control in the midst of intense temptation. Self-control. All these is what Jesus was talking about in the vine and the branches. You must remain in him. Otherwise you can you won't have any of these. I want to read some more fruit. I want to go to Second Peter. I want to read Second Peter 1, chapter 1, 3 through 11. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and, and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own godliness, by his own goodness. Through these, he has given us every great precious promise so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to per perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will keep you. The fruit, of, the fruit will keep you from being ineffective in your knowledge of Jesus Christ. In today's age, the fruit of the Spirit. I'm going back to it. I want to point something out. The most powerful fruit you can have in the Spirit is love. If you, when you when you go home, look up John 15, the vine and branches, and it clearly says from verse. 9 through 16, love is mentioned nine different times. Love or love is mentioned in that short chapter nine different times. And there is nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus mentions it here. So, to stay attached to the vine, Jesus has made it very clear that love is a necessity. You know, 
Many believers want an abundance of God's grace and peace, but they are unwilling to put forth the effort to get to know Him better. Everybody wants God's peace, they want His grace, but want to do very little to get to know Him better. Yes. And the only way you're going to get to know Jesus better is by reading this Word. Oh, yes. I'm absolutely convinced that without reading God's Word, you're going to fall from that vine. You're going to, be se you're going to separate yourself from the vine. Amen. Because as your body needs food, so your spirit needs to be fed. I cannot go as far a preacher as this man is here from Sunday to Sunday on pastor's pre-digested revelations. I have to feed myself. Amen. I have to take time and get along with God and hear what he has to say to me. The power to grow doesn't come from within us, but from God. We don't have the resources to be truly godly. When we are born again by his spirit, it empowers us. He empowers us with his own moral goodness. He empowers us with his moral goodness. We don't have the power or the capability of being what we're supposed to be. And Jesus knew that. That's why he told the apostles before he ascended in heaven. He said, you go and you tarry. And you, not too long from now, you, be, you will be filled with power. Yes, Lord. You will be filled with power from on high. Yes. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Yes, and that was the beginning of Pentecost. And the Bible says that God has poured his spirit, is pouring his spirit on all people. Yes. To remain in Christ, believe that he is the Son of God. People have asked me, and I'm... Many times he said, you know, I don't know really what the will of God is for my life. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're asking. But God's first and foremost will for anybody's life is to believe on the one that he sent, Jesus Christ. There are people today saying, that's too narrow of a way. There's got to be other ways. There is no other way. And I thank God every day for that narrow way. Through that one man's shed blood on Calvary's cross, we have been made right in the eyes of God. Amen. And the second, to receive him as your Lord and Savior. We have to settle the Lordship issue. That has to be settled. He don't want just 80% of you. He wants all of you. Pastor preached it perfect last Sunday when he said, fill me with more of your spirit. No, let, I want the spirit to take more of me. I want him to take more of me. There's things that I need to get rid of. There's baggage that we all need to get rid of. He don't want just a certain percentage. He wants all of you. To remain in Christ, you've got to do what he says. So many people today are believing a lie. I heard a saint say this last week. I don't have to go to church every Sunday. What? The Bible tells me, do, do not forsake the gathering as so many are in the custom of doing. And the Bible also says Jesus, every Sabbath, you could find him in the synagogue, which was church, as was his custom. I want to model my life after Jesus Christ. That's why he came. He came to to defeat sin, but he came and he was born. Think about it. He was born a man. The God who threw all this into creation became a living being, became a human being. God became his own creation. And I think we need to do what he says. His commands aren't that, they're not that great. They're not that bad. It's, it's not hard not to commit adultery. It's not that hard not to steal. It's not that hard. And he tells us these things for our good. Another way to remain in Christ, and I'm absolutely convinced, is, 
It's one of the ways once you get saved is do not let this depart from your sight. Amen. Amen. Don't let this book depart from your sight. I, I, I tell you truthfully, when I got saved, if I, I was I was raised where don't pick up the Bible. You, you, you'll never understand it. We give you this book here, you just go by this. And, and my wife bought me this Bible. This is one of three. She bought she bought me the Bible. And I said, Marilyn, I, I, I know I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I was born again and everything. I said, but I, I don't I don't know about this. And she said, just 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 start reading it. And she led me to John, the Gospel of John. And I want to tell you, saints of God, nothing that I did, but I haven't came out of it since. And I, you know what? I don't never want to come out of this. I don't never want to come out of this. Second Timothy 3.16 is true. It's living in its acting. It's, it's sharper than a double-edged sword. This, every word in here is from God. It's God's love letter to us. In Hebrews 2, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of my but I'm almost there. In Hebrews 2, the Bible tells us to pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we don't drift away. It says, pay more careful attention to what you have heard, so that you don't drift away. Today, in this chaotic world, I have seen, I have witnessed for myself, many, many men and women of God. They've drifted away. God didn't leave them. They walked away from God. And he's waiting with an outstretched hand. Just waiting for them to come back to him. And today, saints of God, listen to me. It is so vital, so very important that we don't fall away from the vine. Jesus is our life. Apart from him, he says you can do nothing. And he means you can't do nothing up away from him. Or you might try. You might make some feeble attempts. You might, you might do this, you might do that. But, but you're not, you're not, you're not going to... Jesus said, what does it profit a man who gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? I know about you all. I don't take my salvation for granted. I do not, I won't say that again, I do not take my salvation for granted. I, I, I want to know Jesus better. I, I want to have fellowship with him. And that's what he's talking about here in John 15. You must stay connected. And He'll take you to places you never, you could even imagine. One day Jesus was talking to his apostles in Matthew 24, 12. He was talking about the end of the age. And he said, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. I didn't say that. He who stands firm to the end will be saved. I hope a lot of people's right. That you can say a prayer 20 years ago and live any old way you want to. That'd be wonderful, wouldn't it, Pastor? But if it is true, why would you even want to live? Why, why wouldn't you want to stay connected to the one who saved you? I want to go to Revel in Revelation 2. Jesus addressing the churches, which is today, although it was then, but he's still talking to the churches today. He says to the church in Ephesus, Ephesus, he, he, he commends them for their, all their good works and their good deeds. And he says this. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. 
Jesus is speaking to the churches. He's speaking to us. Do you remember when you first got saved? How attached you was? How on fire you was? Full of zeal? Full of fire? Not much knowledge. But you picked this up, you started reading. Well, the problem today is a lot of people have knowledge, but no more zeal. Mm -hmm. You'll lose your zeal if you don't stay attached to the vine. Oh. Yeah. You will lose your zeal if you don't stay attached to the vine. That's why Jesus makes it clear. My Father cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Let me tell you something. A fruit tree that has dead branches has got to be removed because it will infect the rest of the branches. You have to be pruned. Discipline, because his discipline is going to bring forth more fruit in our lives. It don't feel good at the time, but consider it pure joy, because like a good father, he disciplines his sons and daughters. I want to bring something else to your attention before I go on to the next one. That, that was the first church, and the last church, which is the church in Lodosia. I know you all know this, but I'm just bringing it back to you. He said, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, because you're not hot or cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. In other words, he's saying, you make me sick to my stomach. A lukewarm drink isn't good for anything that's hot. It's not good for anything that's cold. Have you ever picked up, say, for example, a cup of coffee that you thought was was, was really hot, and you pick it like that, and you get them out, and it's, it's just nothing but lukewarm. Or how about a, a, a cool drink that you thought was really cool, and it, and it, was, it was hot? You know, oh, what's that? What's that? Well, that's what Jesus is saying. He said, you're lukewarm. Jesus don't want us lukewarm. He don't want you cold. He wants you on fire. He wants us to be on fire for him. Because he's going to come back. He said, I will return. I'm coming back soon. And say of God, I believe. I know you all been hearing this for, for years probably. Pastor Wright, you've probably been hearing this since you was knee high to a grasshopper. But it, we're closer now than we ever was. Amen. We're close. And, and with just look around you. Missiles was flying into Israel three days ago. I ain't going to get into it, but look what's going on in some churches. Everything is against God's word. Come on. Everything is against God's word. And then you have some leaders that will stand up and say, well, they're on a journey. They better get on the right journey. I'm not saying it. Jesus said it. You must stay attached to the vine. What makes people think you can live any old way you want to and God's going to throw his doors wide open to us? Amen. Pastor's preached it a thousand times and he's preached it once. That's not even being a, a fair judge. I thank God I don't know for sure who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. I'm glad I don't judge that. But he will judge it. And he knows the hearts of all men. And what, what I wanted to bring to your attention was at the end of all, every one of these seven churches, Jesus says two things. He says it to every one of them. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. And then he says, and to him who overcomes. You see, God's done all he can do. Now we got to be an overcomer. By what? By the blood of the Lamb. We can only overcome if we stay attached to the vine. Apart from Jesus, you can do absolutely nothing. Absolutely, totally nothing. Jesus made the first choice.
to love and to die for us, to invite us to live with him forever. We make the next choice to accept or reject his wonderful offer. Without his choice, we won't even have the first choice. Think about that once. Without Jesus' choice, we would have no choice. I thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Who said, I will go. He left heaven and came to this earth that we could have eternal life. That we could be with him for all eternity. Saints of God, we're getting wrapped up too much in what's going on in this world. No focus of what's going on, what's going to go on eternally. I said in my Sunday school class, I said it really amazes me that we have children that we make sure they have the best designer jeans, make sure they have the best of this, the best of that. But don't give one effort until where are they going to spend eternity if something was to happen? And the Bible's clear on it. We're to raise our children in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't turn from it. Let me tell you something. It starts at home. It starts at home. Good people build good churches. Good churches don't build good people. Good people build good churches. And it's, it's got to come from the home. If we don't start training our children in the way they should go, it's just going to be more and more chaos. Yes, amen. Somehow, some way, people of the world have said, no, this is the way it's going to be. And we sat back as Christians and said, okay, okay. We're going to take a prayer out of school. Okay. Okay. We're going to not have, we're going to have same-sex marriage. Okay. It's not okay. That's not remaining in the vine. We have to remain in the vine. Jesus makes it quite clear. We have to do what he says. When we fail, and we all fall short of the glory of God, don't misunderstand me. I do every day of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious Holy Spirit Amen. that will convict me as soon as I do it. Amen. He will convict you as soon as you do it. But now it's up to you to say, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I didn't handle that right. I need you to help me. I need you to forgive me. That's forgiveness. The problem today is that people are starting to make excuses for their own sins. As long as you're dealing with the sin is one thing. It's when you don't deal with it, that's when you're in serious trouble. Amen. Let me tell you something about, I ain't much of a farm boy, but I, 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 I know this to be true, but years back when they would brand a cow, they would hit it once and that cow would jump 20 feet in the air. Then they hit it again, it jumped a little bit. The third time they hit it with that brand iron, it sat there and stared at you because all the nerve endings was dead. And that's what happens with sin. Sin, unchecked, will lead to death. Come on. Yeah. Sin, unchecked, will lead to death. And your enemy, the lion, will get you to thinking that what you're doing it's all right. After all, everybody does. They all do. Nothing wrong with that. I've heard parents say about little Johnny smoking marijuana. Come on now. Jim, they all do. No, they don't. 
No, they don't. You're believing a life in the pits of hell. And it's up to you to come here, John. Speaking about marijuana, I believe every child in the world should have a drug problem. They should have a drug problem. They should be driving to church every time them doors are open. Every time this man stands in the hall, every time there's a Sunday school lesson, they should be driving to church. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And it's our responsibility to get them there. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something. When I was a child, I would have loved if they had timeouts. <laughs> That'd be beautiful. Believe me, Pastor, I could have got through those timeouts. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <coughs> One thing I had timeout do was just go like this and say, hey, hey, that won't happen again. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I heard it said one time, as John Hayes preaches one time, he said, uh, if, if travel salesman knocked on the door and the little nine-year-old boy opened up the door and the travel salesman said, I want to see who's, I want to talk to you, who's in charge here. And the little boy swung open the door and he says, that guy right there in the high chair, he's got total charge around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> that's, that's the truth today. But it's our responsibility. Train your children the way they should go. I had a sister come to me years ago, I think before we even got here. Being a friend of mine, we was, we, was, we was just doing visitations, and she said, Brother Jim, Brother Jim, I, I, need, I, I need you to come to my home. I, I, I believe my son is, oh, he's, what does he say? No, I, I believe he's possessed. <laughs> I said, Sister, I didn't even know you had a son. Where's he been? Now, you know, that's awful. You know, we went, but it's an awful thing to let a child tell you, I don't have to go to church. I don't want to go to church. And I've heard parents say, well, he, they're hard to get up. They're hard to get up. They're hard, they're hard to get up in the morning. How do you get to school? But I don't want to just beat on a dead horse, but what I'm trying to say is if we stay connected to the vine and our children see us staying connected to the vine, there's one thing I've learned about children and grandchildren. They may not always mind you, but guaranteed they will imitate you. If they see mom and dad, grandma and grandpa reading the, reading the Gospels, they will pick up the Gospels. I got to... <laughs> I, had, I got a, girl, a grandson, he's, he's now 14. When, when he was little, he'd walk around with a mic in his hand, yeah. imitating the pastor. Mm -hmm. They will imitate you, but we have to take the time to show them. You know, this right here is, is not even part of my notes. But it tells me something when I hear Jesus say in Revelations, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. And he who overcomes will be dressed in white. Or he who ever overcomes will inherit all of this. The only way, saints of God, you can overcome is if you stay connected to the vine. And I guarantee you, the devil does not want that to happen. He knows he can't have your soul. So he tries to see others. He tries to make you feel less than. He attacks you in your most vulnerable areas. But the Bible teaches us we should be aware of his schemes and his tricks. You know, some time back, I, the Lord delivered me from alcohol. And every once in a while, he tries to throw that dart at me, but you know what, your mind is like a computer, I gotta push a button and inject it, I, I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna entertain that thought. Yeah. Right. You see, James gives a, he gives an equation for sin. First you have a desire, 
then when you act on that desire, it becomes sin. And then sin, when it's fully blown, becomes death. Desire, sin, then death. Unrepentant. But first you have the desire. And the Bible tells me you're never tempted about anything you don't already know about. And God always allows a way out from underneath it. Sometimes we like to entertain some of these things. But that's, that's your choice. You push a button. Brother Gene brought something real interesting out of Sunday school class last Sunday. We'll talk about it again today. Talk about, you know, we're all good at pointing finger. Uh, it started way back in the garden, as you know. And Brother Gene said, I wonder how many times she was tempted before she finally gave in. Never thought of that before. We all read that and we think, well, that was probably the first time. Probably not. He brought up a very interesting point. I wonder how many times she was tempted. And you see, it was it was it probably got to be where, you know what? I, I wonder, I wonder what would happen. That's what he does. He tries to get you doubting. Doubting God. But if you stay attached to the vine and stay close to him, the devil has to flee from you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to close with this note. And I know we're not climbing the walls today and what have you. But it was, this has been a message that I know that the Lord has laid on my heart. He's, he's, he's we're, I believe it's winding down. And we got to stay connected to the vine. We, we, we can't risk Pastor Scotty preached it a month ago, five weeks ago. It was beautiful. About the boundaries. There's boundaries, ain't there, Scott? And sometimes we want to go, we want to take those boundaries a little further. And a little further. And God said, no, no. These are, the, these are the boundaries. You stay in the boundaries. But if you don't stay attached to the vine, you will go around those boundaries. Now you're on dangerous territory. And today is very important to stay attached to the body. My order calls this is plain and simple. If you're sick today, got an ailment today, it's a piece of cake for Jesus. If you're lost without him today, he's standing here like this with an open arm. If you want more of Jesus, if you want to stay close to him and stay attached to the vine, again, he's standing here with open arms. And I know, I know about anybody else. I need a touch from Jesus every day of my life. There's not a day that goes by that I don't need a touch. If, if the demons would, the elders would come down, we're going to do like Pastor has done. If you need anything from Jesus, the Bible says, are any of you sick? Let them call the elders of the church. And they will anoint you with oil. And if that person has sin, his sins will be forgiven. Today, I believe I have preached what the Lord has laid on my heart to the very best of my ability. Now, it's like I said earlier, Jesus made the first choice. And without his choice, we would have no choice. So today, if you would, you can these elders are going to anoint you with oil. And we're going to pray for you. Those of you that would come, please start coming now. And the, and, and the Lord, the Lord will bless you. Come, we all need to stay attached to the vine. Because he is the true vine. He's the true vine. He's the garden, and the Father is the garden. Come. 
come. Just come. Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you, Lord, for those that's coming. That they want more of you, Lord. They want to stay close to you, Lord Jesus. Some may need healing. Some may, may need to know you as their personal Savior. Whatever it is, Lord, you are here for them today. And everything, Lord, is possible for you. Nothing is too big for the Lord. Nothing at all is too big for Jesus. Father, I pray that you touch and minister to every person that's at this altar today. In the sound of my voice, Lord, be it healing, be it salvation, be it a closer walk with you, Lord. I pray that you touch and that you minister and you heal, Lord Jesus. Because, Lord, without you, we are nothing. With you, we are everything. We can do nothing apart from you, Lord. But with you, all things are possible.
receive to, to stay attached to the vine, Lord Jesus. Lord, nothing is Because your spirit has showed up. 